the magic has happened. <laughs> okay, so we are at almost at the end. We have the last panel, and then we can still do a little bit of uh, Q and A with everybody or a chat. So, okay, so. Um, I think we have now, we have only Berlin here. Geza, you're also in Berlin, right? Yeah, true. Yeah, there we go. Problem solved. <laughs> okay, then I have to let you deal with this. No, okay. Um, yeah, in a, if anybody has questions, please post on YouTube. And um, I think we still have some questions from the previous uh, panel that were not tackled. I don't know if you want to um, ask those. Otherwise... Um, if you have already something, Yeza, prepared, it's all of a sudden. Sure, no, what, what was the, the, the question left unsolved? Oh, um, oh, there were questions for Geza. Great. Um, what were the biggest challenges that you were facing regarding community work or by fighting for diversity? I guess one challenge that would come to my mind just didn't be the most uh, pressing one, but um, having people who um, say, but why do you need, um, again, and this came up actually in the first panel discussion, why do you need a, um, just communities uh, that, that have written on them something about ladies or, or women? Um, what, like, are you basically then not segregating people or why, why, why does it, this need be? Or are you not discriminating now everyone else who doesn't feel uh, they they can come or so, um, and I think um, yeah, arguing for this is then kind of something that you then have to somehow think of how you argue for it. Um, uh, where for me the answer, but I, I I would like the others to pitch in here because I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm the most enlightened person to talk about it. But I've just always thought that indeed, and I think that's how in Hamburg we handled it. Like we just said, everyone can come. Um, it's just that we want to be a safe space and if you feel like you can contribute to this safe space and <laughs> not like uh, make it go, um, I mean, not, not break it, then um, then you're free to come. And yeah, and also then I've just always thought that this is this is just the, the fantastic thing about Pi Ladies because um, it's really just this, this meetup where I always feel it's a very welcoming atmosphere. We can ask all the questions we want. Um, and that just makes people do fantastic things that many of them wouldn't wouldn't uh, go and teach a workshop about or or say or just uh, raise a discussion about. And that just always has reminded me that yeah, it's it's important to to argue then like for these kinds of uh, uh, groups and meetups. This is very tricky in Berlin. We in the Pilates Berlin we did have this discussion. It's bad that Jessica is not here because we actually had a great talk about this. Um, because, yeah, it is welcoming, but there's this point that uh, Sumia brought a lot on her, on, on, on her talk, right? Like, uh, there's an issue we need to address, and this is why there's those focus. And if you say, um, if you do not put also this kind of restrictions, you will have more of the same all the time. And it is this very delicate balance between... Uh, being open enough, but giving this kind of preference for the ones that usually do not speak. It's like a, it's like a, do you know that we have this thing in mind that you need to put yourself, uh, and we also usually say that, yeah, you need to be able to speak and say, but some people are just introverted or they just don't like it. And how do you respect these differences and make sure everyone has a vote on the table? But it doesn't mean that they need to be the same. And I don't know, Sumia, because I, I was very inspired for what you were actually talking about, the, the focus groups. Yeah, I have something to say about the diversity challenge that we face, right, in IT, for instance. So because I'm, uh, I mean, I'm not like a huge part of my ladies, but I'm there in most of the communities so i'm also always looking for like communities to join so if you look at my slack there are like 20 communities i'm in so uh i think 
I like that there are a lot of communities, but it's hard to get people into the communities without the communities working together. So that is another challenge that I saw that even though like in Android developer group, for instance, we have a big, huge group. So say for instance, every month we meet and there are 40 people and there'll be two women in among the whole 40 people. So we don't have representation, even though I know people in the community personally that they are Android developers, they don't come for the meetups. They're not there. They do not want to represent. They do not want to be role models. They already are juggling with a lot of stuff. So I think uh, women have to be like, at least be present. That is the minimal I would say is important because if we don't uh, stick together, lift each other, even at workplaces, right? Like if there are developers, then just talk to other developers and bring them into the communities. Nobody takes this as upon themselves as a job that I need to bring more women into the community. So unless I go screaming and yelling and be like, uh, we know, need more women, we need women speakers, you know, there's nobody who really thinks it's important. So to make sure that we say that to the right people, it's important to have more women, it's important to bring more women, or even from other marginalized group, right? Uh, if you see all white uh, kind of a company, you have to make sure that there are uh, other people in the company. If they're just men on the board, you have to ask people, why are they just, I just ask randomly the uh, founders that, oh, why are they not uh, female executives in this company? Just, you know, ask a question, right? It's so simple. They can, I mean, you don't want to put them at spot because you genuinely are curious about this, not because, you know, you want to put people at spot. Uh, so I just think uh, people need to ask questions and good questions in the correct places. So when there are uh, meetings, when there is, uh, you know, town hall meetings, just being there and asking a good question, maybe you might not get a good answer, but it, it makes sure, like I had one uh, instance that I can just share uh, if there is time. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like in one of the companies, they were like in a meeting, we had like 80 people in the whole meeting. It was a town hall meeting. And uh, I asked the founder at the end, he, they were talking about diversity and things like that. Like what actions have you taken to bring more female executives so they can take action uh, to improve diversity, right? And uh, they, they didn't have an answer for this. And uh, it, it was really shocking, you know, <laughs> that they haven't even thought about this uh, to answer when they're talking on this topic, right? They don't have any action items on their agenda. So then there were like 30 women writing to me on Slack saying, this was such a great question. You know, it, I'm so inspired, I'm gonna ask more. So it's just gonna snowball if you just make an effort, a tiny effort, I think. And I also feel like it's, it's the, the big difference is um, that um, I feel like why there's the need for Pi Ladies or, or other similar groups is that this is actually things like what, what Eva said, uh, for example, about leading and, and role models in leading, seeing other people uh, take the stage and, and do a talk or a workshop um, or do one yourself um, because you feel safe. This is just something that's really a, a big step out of your comfort zone for, for, for many people. And I feel it's just not, um, because I've also seen suggestions such as, should we have only female software, uh, only women's software teams or something and then people are like no 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 i don't want to be an all women's software team but i think there th that's not so much of a problem because um if i'm with the same team every day then i feel safe usually in that team and it's just like everyone knows me but i don't have to prove myself but all these things where you're really way outside your comfort zone because you you're starting to you're trying to lead or you're trying to be uh, uh talking like public speaking um it's it's just important to to have a forum for that i feel that is um, that makes as many people as possible just take this first step um, out of their comfort zone. So that there at some point then can be more uh, people in, yeah. in the uh, just. Um, but I also think on the other hand, um, it shouldn't just be on the shoulders of women and other minorities to put the work for this, right? So I think I was talking to a friend of mine at Microsoft Research and she was saying that what happened there was when they decided to do diversity 
some years ago. Um, it was also the men who had to attend diversity conferences, right? It was like, because we have a lot of women spending their career time on attending conferences for diversity, but it's also the men that have to attend diversity conferences to, you know, experience, to be part of the dialogue, to understand what's going on, to not be like, oh, I didn't know, you know, what a surprise, you know? It was, oh, I never know why you didn't, didn't you ever tell me, right? So. Uh, mm -hmm. Nobody ever told me. So it's it's also, I think, the the job of the people that are in the majority to educate themselves. So I would totally say. agree on that. Otherwise, it's just more weight on the shoulder. Like, a, oh, it's, yeah. it's like a, it's blaming the victim <laughs> in a more right like a too big yeah. example but like I the same example when you when you hear about uh, when you read about uh, more heavy cases like a uh, rape for example it's a for me it's an um, extreme example but when you think about blaming the victim is actually that when you say oh it's your fault you didn't speak but like i didn't speak yeah. because i didn't have a chance to speak i didn't have the space and this activity has to be come has come together right you yeah you need to do your part you need to show up you need to, uh, that's why, like, a, you won't increase the numbers if you're not there. But at the same time, you cannot just expect for you to just adapt to the world and this world not doing anything back to actually uh, accept you. Um, there's this really beautiful, um, I won't remember actually the quote, but I think a lot about the disability as well. And it's like you're saying, Oh, I was a, I was such a good one. It's like it doesn't matter if you if you invite you can invite me for the party, but I need to be invited to dance. You do, oh yeah, so I you know. just say it, it's a quote by Verna Myers, and she says diversity is being invited to the party, and inclusion is uh, being asked to dance. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had that quote in my talk today, but I skipped some of the slides. But yeah, I totally agree with that. And like how Teresa said, that uh, allyship is super important, right? When, when actually, you know, other way around, when people come to my community or come to me and say, oh, is this like a focus group for women? I'm like, no, be, be, feel free to come and mentor women, right? I'm, I'm including more people uh, to come and be there. You know, I invite everyone to come and be there to understand problems. And when we do fishbowl discussions, when we talk about challenges people are facing from marginalized group by uh, women, we, uh, they come out and speak to uh, us freely because I have women mentors uh, who they're uh, familiar with and they don't feel this inhibition when there are men also or from anyone who's coming and attending. They don't feel like uh, I shouldn't be saying this because there are other guys. They feel more safe because there are women, there's, um, you know, there are mentors they know. So I think it's a great way to teach other people who are not aware of diversity because communities have this powerful thing about talking about diversity and teaching about diversity. So informing people is like, first you can say, oh, we are not aware, then please come join us, right? So that's why I call also Coder B more like, you know, generic, so they don't start asking me questions in a way. So, yeah. Okay, I have a maybe one last question for, I think we've all organized, um, events and uh, well, for also all different communities, but especially for high ladies or communities that are meant for empowering uh, women and uh, people from underrepresented groups. How often did you hear the statement of, well, but this is not diverse if you do not invite the others? <laughs> like, <laughs> I haven't yeah, counted. Not I mean, usually I, I haven't really faced like a strong opposition for sure. I think people are aware and to a certain extent, because I keep posting things that people get curious on the Slack channels. And then uh, I feel like I get good feedback because I have so many people from different leadership backgrounds come and talk, listen to my talks about diversity, especially, right? So community managers, students to everyone. So. 
uh, usually people are very curious, honestly, I feel. <laughs> so we just need more people to talk about it, to, uh, you know, like spread the word. Uh, I feel that. I don't see any strong opposition for sure. I remember facing a very strong opposition. I did would often, at least once in a while, I have the question like, yeah, but why ladies? And um, that was a good question for us that helped us also rethink ourselves. And I think that's why also Pi Ladies is more defining um, as a more diverse instead of woman, strongly putting woman. Um, but also, I think much has been achieved historically I'm, I'm not here that long to say historically but i think there was a lot of effort saying uh, to push women and now we kind of reach right we have some improvement there and now we are it's, it's supposed to be organic we expect this kind of movement to be organic and i think this is what's happening now as well say oh, okay we kind of we see women now what's missing who, who has been left behind that we need to give our hands and bring it up to. Yeah, so I think it's reformulating. And I think Pi Ladies is a au concours because it's really, I super relate with your talk, today. I want to say. I stay, I do not even code in Python. I basically, uh, um, I'm, I'm basically using JavaScript, but I love this community. <laughs> <laughs> I do some things just to, to, to stay well, sharp, but the community when I did, is so good. I made for the talk, the, the, the dashboard is in Plotly and Dash, which is, I guess, JavaScript right, wrapped in Python. So it's, yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking we let uh, everybody else who's still left on the stream in and have, I don't know, until we are super tired. So I'm gonna add, we like see who's still awake here. Paula, let's see when she's coming uh, her camera back on. And yeah, so, um, and there you go. JavaScript and Python are wonderful together. Yes, I can't actually wait to, in my future life, be good at D3JS. That is my only dream actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lot of work, um, yeah. So there's one question from Carol. Um, mm -hmm. There was one. Maybe we can use that. What would you want to teach to other Pi ladies? Who wants to go first? Oh, I can tell what I learned a lot and now I try to change a lot my perspective. Um, and I try to replicate it all the time, which is this amazing support. And I think this event is actually the an icon for that. I mean, it's so wonderful to say, oh, we're three time zones. It's so powerful. And uh, yeah, big shout out to Meili and Jessica that, whoa, the, when I just got into the organization, they were the organizers. and. It was just simple things, the smaller things, like you're giving a talk and they just looking at you and say, you're ready. That changes everything. It's, it's having someone there who believes in you. It doesn't matter how absurd you're doing. Like, a, well, you can be here, but is that your wish? I will support you. And this is very powerful. Before you go on with the answers, Carol has added a level of complexity to the question. If you had 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, then I would say something, it's a bit piggybacking off of what Giza actually mentioned, and it really struck a chord with me, and I didn't realize this is how I felt until she uttered the words exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there you go, Giza, for an inspirational moment. But I would say that um, not losing that opportunity to learn and to grow and to share that motivation with other women. That's what I would 
say, is important to teach um, other Pi ladies. I could also add merge conflicts. Somehow everybody is so scared about merge conflicts. I have all sorts of ways to deal with merge conflicts from deleting the whole repository and doing it all over again, you know, I mean, like, or really going in a, the, the latest breed of merge conflicts that I've seen are the ones in Jupyter notebooks that you have to actually deal with them in VS code by opening them as text and then actually dealing with the merge conflict by hand and then hope that it worked. So, yeah, so I would, I can say nobody should be scared of merge conflicts. If that achievement is like unlocked, then I'm done, I think. But I'm not <laughs> sure. um, so I, I have something. Oh, sorry, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> was okay, to... just. Uh... <laughs> so I was just saying uh, like pair programming for me. I think uh, that is super important uh, because I learned a lot by just pairing with people and I used to bug people to come pair with me. <laughs> you know, when I was a junior, I was just like, people would be annoyed that I was asking them to pair with me. Even I mean, basically you have to at least try, right? So initially I was not asking anyone, but once I realized I'm not doing that well, just by myself learning like constantly. So I said, how do I make this learning better? So two things I did, one is code reviews. Secondly, pair programming. Code reviews are the best way to actually learn to code uh, by just, you know, uh, ask people why they wrote certain piece of code and make them explain to you. And secondly, like if you are stuck with something, don't be stuck, right? Just shout out and ask for help and ask somebody who's an expert and who's nice to come like 10 minutes, spend time with you, just articulate the problem. And then there, voila, you're already set, right? So just don't be scared to like ask people for help. People are always more than willing to help. So that would be my advice. Just code reviews and pair programming are game changers. Yes, I wanted to add on a more technical note as well, I guess. Uh, I would teach someone how to write a test. Um, I think the kind of knowledge that you get from writing a test, right, is the try and failure is that you instantly modularize and document your code because you're like, oh, I need to test this specific thing that does this. Uh, deploying it and get an option, actions and getting an X and getting a plus, so, you know, the feeling of failing and trying, all that, like, it's just by writing one single test. Uh, and even when it comes to contributing to other projects, you need to be able to be more comfortable with, you know, these failures. Um, so then, you know, you share your code and you become part of this community and you really represent who you, what you are and what you do. And I think the goal starts from a test. <laughs> All right, maybe bring the topic bugging. again back. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to really briefly piggyback on what Nicoletta said with uh, testing and then like once you have your tests and you're safe, like now go play around and refactor because like you can do whatever you want. I love testing, I love refactoring, um, but yeah, completely going somewhere else um, to to from 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 basically technical um, excellence to to um, again back to to people um because that's something i've been thinking about a lot recently um and i've never never been good at anything like like people um just leadership or or making people just helping each other grow or or seeing how our team performs well but i think it's something that many people in this room are very good at basically um just creating a very nice atmosphere in 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 um in meetups and that's what actually what i would then just uh, i wouldn't even need 10 minutes to teach uh, another pair lady i would just say go um to the next pair ladies meetup and and observe really closely how the people who are hosting this meetup are just managing to create a really great atmosphere and just bring the best out of other people and just make them do things and and um um yeah just talk in front of other people for the first time and then just something really really great comes out and they are sharing something that's really really beneficial for everyone and um, i would i think um yeah 
I, I would tell them that. I think I would also add to this. So basically what I would teach others is that they should teach others because even if you think that you really like uh, understand a certain function or package, you always can learn something new if you try to explain it to someone else. Yeah. And the PyLadies meetups and also the conferences are a very good chance to explain it to someone else. So, yeah, be brave and give a talk and join the community. <laughs> I have to say that I love, um, I've noticed so what PyLadies Berlin is doing with this non-coding superpowers. I find that very fascinating. So last talk was amazing on bullet journaling. Uh, again, nothing to do with coding, but I was like, ah, I should start to put it. I always plan on organizing my life, always in the plan phase. But um, yeah, so I really, really love um, this non-coding superpowers that are highlighted in the Pilot is Berlin. You're so right, Teresa. I, I, was in, I was surprised after that talk. I really reflected and I spent all day Saturday and Sunday reorganizing my life believe it I, I, I on set by the by the time Sunday afternoon ended I had actually collapsed 10 different apps into one and I've started using ClickUp and believe me I, I have my personal blog now in there I have my Jira board in there I have uh, my mind maps I have my Pomodors to keep me on track. I have a timer <laughs> when I'm doing specific tasks. All of it is in ClickUp. And this was inspired completely by the software, uh, non-technical coding and everything in one spot. So if you're looking for some ultimate one tool to rule them all, I would suggest you try ClickUp, <laughs> by the way. And I don't work for them. <laughs> yeah. They should be paying you <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I was really impressed how many different apps I had to solve problems. Yeah, and this just getting organized helps to keep me on track with my, my personal projects and you know my to-do list, all of it is in one place. And so this is important when it comes to non-technical skills, I think, being organized. <laughs> is it spelled like this, click up? In yep, that's it. That's it. I'll put it, uh, Carol asked me to put it in the link. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm more I like... Also... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I just, I was happy at the talk that she said that her for her personal project, she does pen and paper because I really enjoy pen and paper note taking. <laughs> Although I have Procreate, another app that I can also recommend. Um, for talks, I use it now. But for uh, I really like the pen and paper, so I'm I'm basically collecting nice notebooks. <laughs> collecting. So I just wanted to say another idea for uh, Pi Ladies something to implement is that private mentorship, right? Like so, just if you have time, like to just shout out on the Slack channel, like are you struggling with something? Just talk to me. Have a Calendly link and just uh, ask people to talk to you and spend like half an hour uh, solving, maybe trying to help them with their challenges. Uh, so most of the time when I talk to like um, in, uh, aspirants or even programmers in their initial stages, they have this huge challenge of navigating uh, all these emotions that are going on. You know, like there's this thing about like uh, things that are pulling them down when they want to achieve more. And it's all emotional. It's mostly not that they cannot write code or, you know, it's nothing that's skill based. It's basically they don't know how to navigate this emotion of uh, like debugging, for instance, right? They get bogged down by, I can't solve this challenge and why am I, why am I not so smart or they compare themselves. So I think lots of challenges I f or questions I face is that, you know, not related to code. <laughs> Nothing related to code. So when I talk to people about private mentorship, they block time to talk about their workplaces, uh, how they're being treated or what they're being said. 
people what how they talk them down or condescending way uh, they don't get uh, mentorship uh, at work so they want to find other ways so a lot of other challenges like career changes or you know they don't have support and are single parents so everything around outside and not related to tech at all like so this is what i think is more important if you just sh show them that little of empathy and reassurance that hey listen i'm in tech for 10 years you can do this if i can do this you can do this just they need to hear this right and that's so empowering i felt my role models my colleagues did this to me and uh, however it worked out really well and many times when i felt like i should quit the development because i'm not good enough it was always somebody's kind words that made me come back and community feeling that made me come back so i even though at that moment i felt like no this is it i'm done this career is over it's always like someone's kind words or reassurance that brought me back so yeah <laughs> i just feel like uh, more of these kind of private things um, as in like private mentorships or even uh, talks which are empowering i think if you are a senior or a, a coach speaker I would love to like see more of this. Definitely, this is where we start. Why we started the non conduct superpowers? It was like first, it was a gentle. It's a very gentle way for you just to express anything and not feel pressure to be the badass who really know the answers for the technical part. But it is very good to have this balance because we need it. the technical part is is hard so having um when you have when we start the events especially the in-person events it was like a, this very gentle people were coming in having some drinks doing something and i was like oh just just slow down and then boom machine learning ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i find to be honest i i always i i i'm not really excited about giving code talks like i giving talks where i have code on my slides or i talk about coding unless you know so and i always have this i've i talked to i think i talked to ellen from berlin um about it because i always felt like i i basically ended up asking organizers of conference if is it okay if i submit at a tech conference a non-tech talk because <laughs> and i it's like yeah yeah sure uh, but I had friends from my friend circle who said, oh, yeah, only women talk about topics like that, you know, <laughs> this being other women saying that. So, so in the end, it ended up like I'm kind of censoring myself on this one. But in, in a sense, I cannot really get motivated about talking about tech, like just having code slides when I know that at work, you have way more problems that are way beyond code, right? So why aren't people talking about that more? <laughs> except us <laughs> so again but yeah so i think code to arms everybody should give more non-tech talks at tech conferences and also the job interview should focus a bit more on the non-tech part of the job but i don't know how long will it take for that to change I have a question to everyone regarding this job interviews, right? So uh, I feel like, you know, there is a big problem of uh, people being biased, having implicit biases in their heads about women being in tech or programming. And they, when they look at you and they don't see that, you know, you're not a white man. <laughs> they don't immediately trust your capability of writing code, right? So even though you might have like a huge background of writing code and you're really good at it, uh, it's really hard to remove that kind of bias from the interview processes. Maybe they don't even get back to you or, you know, things like that. So do you think uh, like recruitment, especially like frontline recruiters, what do you see any changes in the way they are uh, tackling this problem of implicit biases? Uh, mostly because I feel like most of the people are not getting chances because of these biases in people's head already. And like, if there are any solutions, for instance, uh, have you seen anything like this? Um, solutions that would bring about this kind of change? 
Yes. Not have only men in the interview process. Like, it's that easy. You should have a diverse interview process, which is not the case. Right? And, and you'll see. So teams that are created by diverse hiring committees end up being diverse teams and teams that are not end up being same kind of people team, whatever those kind of people are. And, and that is like, even if you have companies where there's one team that is a diverse team, you know, like, I like how many people know the story of like that one team of the diverse team where like one hiring manager is a diverse part of like different than other yeah. <laughs> hiring managers. So, yeah. Um, so as I but said, it's also true way, that women yeah. also have this bias, right? Yeah. Like we ourselves yeah. have this bias. Yeah. I would say and that nobody is yeah. excluded from no. the biases. No. So no, uh, and it's really it's hard not. unless Check we make. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. I think so, too. One tip that I had um, uh, when I um, I work with um, uh, Eli Flores, which is also a very participant in, in Pi Ladies, and she's very amazing. And one tip that she gave me, and I think it follows both for growing in a career path in engineering, but also for hiring, is having clear metrics. We cannot avoid this bias. I We cannot avoid the best we can do is try to be conscious about it and change it throughout our life. But every, I mean, we're deep into it. We're community leaders. And even then, basically daily, I, I like a pump face to myself for something that I didn't realize I was doing that is absolutely prejudice coming from a very historical it, it will take a long time to change it. But when you have a clear metrics um, that's avoiding subjectivity, that helps a lot. Um, you can, For example, I'm not sure metrics for hiring, but like a for engineering path, when you say, uh, and I'm, I'm an intern, right? I'm in the beginning of my career. And what I was like, oh yeah, what do you expect from me? Like, what do you expect from an intern? And what I heard, heard was like, a, I expect you to learn. That's a very subjective met. How can you measure how much I learn every day? I learn with my cat. Will you be okay if I tell you that I spend six months learning how my I communicate with my cat? Is that the learning? Or <laughs> and I think for hiring goes that, that as well. When you say, yeah, you create these um, tools to help you bypass this knowing uh, in advance that you will be biased, one in or not. Yeah, yeah. I, so I've been, sorry. No, it's I've okay. been like no. hiring manager, so I've done it, you know, and I just had like, I saw sometimes a CV and I was like, I don't feel my decision is objective at the moment. And then I'm like, I won't judge this CV. So I'm like, and I, I know exactly, like, first, I cannot judge people from countries that I've never been to, or um, I don't know, there's some words that are triggering me. So, and I've delegated this. I, I actually had open discussions about it. You know, I said, like, I feel like I'm biased about this one. I don't know. I mean, except the one case when somebody applied and they had actively built um, public surveillance software with AI and were putting that as one of the projects they have worked on and they were proud of it. And I was like, I don't know about that either. <laughs> like, I guess our moral compass doesn't align. So, but I also escalated this CV. I was like, I don't know. It's not my company, right? So I don't, but yeah, so yeah. Um, I wanted to come back to, no, Nicoletta wanted to say something. You wanted to say something. No, it's gone. I wanted, Odette said, why should it be a problem if only women do it? Oh, sorry, I'm not gonna. Why should it be a problem if only women do it? I feel that as we as women look too much down on ourselves, on skills that are so important to function as a human. We are not robots, robots though. And 
and yeah <laughs> so my take on this one is well i guess it's maybe normal still in 2021 <laughs> we're just like i don't know i ask uh today at work uh when did women in germany start voting <laughs> i was like somewhere in the 50s it's just like what 60 to 70 years ago um so but there is one way to overcome this is ask other women hey do you think <laughs> is this demeaning if i talk is this like a bad thing and then let other people cheer you up and say no do it <laughs> It's good. I want to hear about it. You know, it's important. And maybe that can change your mind about your perception of some topics that you might be inspired to talk about, but feel like the judgment of the world is too harsh. So, yeah. That's my take. Maybe somebody else has another workaround. <laughs> it's a workaround. So I just have this one thing uh, that it, like in this book, Invisible Women, right? I wanted to mention this also in my talk that it's such a amazing book that if you haven't read it and everybody should read it, this is what I feel like it's the best book I've read till date. Uh, so like data is empowering, right? Just to know stuff is so much already like going to make you aware to be conscious. So ever since I read that book, I can just challenge so many design flaws around me because this book talks about how uh, non-inclusive designs are as compared to women, right? So in as in like default, by default, they are made for men. And everything that is niche, like if it's a women's mask, if it's a women's table, if it's a women's something, then it's for made for women. Otherwise, they don't really consider women into design. And this is true at workplaces, everywhere, right? Uh, cars, or that's why women are dying and people are women are not getting equal pay. That brings me to this point, which I wanted to talk about, that gender equality, like pay, pay gap, right? Uh, I saw that last year on Twitter, there were a lot of people sharing this about pay gap, like they were making the salaries uh, public because most people are hushing people around this concept because they don't want women to know that you're not paid well, right? So um, yeah, not many people really want to disclose their salaries or even discuss their salaries. So this one, what do you think about this topic, about knowing people uh, you're on the same level as a developer? If you see you're a junior, mid-level, senior, would you like to know everybody's paid the same amount or would you rather not know <laughs> if they're paid more than you or not? Yeah, at least in Germany, the salary topic is just freshly opened out of the taboo zone. <laughs> it's like... I think it's it used to be illegal and now it's not it's illegal to be illegal but still people are not comfortable talking about it because they've been raised on it being illegal and it indeed it supports so it's like 20 percent gender pay gap in germany very nice um yeah i come from romania and we have only five there that's percent. great to hear <laughs> that's amazing yeah, there was, I won't go in politics now. So. I'm totally 100% in favor of transparent, transparency. I mean, if everything has something close, it's, it's a, I think is an issue. And yeah, I understand you can have, uh, a kind of a negotiable range, but I think for the little thing that I can find out that this gap is actually huge. And that comes also from the lack of transparency in the uh, metrics. When you say, oh yeah, but yeah. And that is also used a lot of, um, yeah, that's used a lot to, I think I'm sleeping. I'm forgetting the word. Yeah, 
200% with it, with the transparency. And I think we should talk more about that in numbers. Yeah. So I just felt like thing? I cut off someone. Who? No. Sorry. Oh. Again, I cut off. Go. I wanted to mention that the noun project, which is um, basically, sh you know, you can get really cool icons. They have published their strategy for salary negotiations, how to remove the bias out of it. Um, I, it's a really nice article. I can share it to you. Um, we have a question. I can start. Um, I'll say um, amazing. For me, it is empowering. Recommitted. I'm motivated in so many ways. <laughs> From all these comments, I can't. I can't even start to, to, to list them all. Um, I feel connected. I feel connected to people I didn't even know existed before, and they're not even in my country or continent. So, definitely connected. I feel very inspired. I have to say, thank you very much for all the talk, and thank you very much for organizing the event. I think I I'm share. a bit tired, but I still have to go with the dog out. <laughs> You're brave. Maybe that's the word, brave. <laughs> brave, yeah. It's, it's Hamburg. That nothing happens outside at night. You don't need to be brave. <laughs> but you can go out in the dark. <laughs> but I'm All right. very happy it worked out. And also to have Carol as a um, online uh, direct, cheerleader. Like, like an cheerleader and orchestra director, it's awesome. So, yeah, I really love her comments. I just have to say that I'm not part of huge part of Pi Ladies a lot, but. I really love coming back to Pi Ladies. Like I'm usually connected to Pi Ladies Berlin, but I feel so like I belong in this community. So thank you for that. Yeah. You're <laughs> muted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think unless somebody else wants to uh, say anything anymore. I think uh, stuff would be re is recorded. StreamYard apparently records everything. Um, Carol says you do belong. So yeah, we all belong. I think. Yep. So I think um, it's been an amazing event. And uh, yeah, as I said, I, I basically posted it on the PyLady Slack. It was just. You are part of making history, so <laughs> so don't forget that. This is just the first. I really want to give you a big, big thanks. I, I, I watched most of the talks in Bangkok to, today, and it was amazing. It was like, a, yeah, we're super connected, super in the ideas, in the wishes, how we feel. The, the Yeah, so thank you so, so much for putting up such a great event and they had they had people who wrote down the subtitles for all the talks and I was like damn I was just like I thought <laughs> yeah I took I, I tried on one talk thank you Carol I tried on one talk to do it and then it took me like 10 minutes for one minute of subtitles and I was like <laughs> next time I started a bit earlier <laughs> with this part 
yeah. yeah. Is this Yuru nicely asking us to volunteer as uh, translators next time? No. <laughs> it's not translator. It was like English to English, right? English. It was like, like yeah. But you can't trust the automatic translate the subtitles makers for, uh, well, accents. We all have accents, right? Uh, except Avare. Well, Avare also has an accent. She's Wait, we do? What? No. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you can also ask speakers to do this themselves. You know that, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> the, but we, I mean, this was everything organized in one month. Wow. Um, Right. Amazing. So it's not like, uh, I think, I think everybody gave as much as they could. And that's um, the best thing that can come out of it. And then nobody uh, is accounting for extra time work did where and being spiteful about it. And that's uh, because we are a better community than that, I think. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you all yeah. who are yeah. who are behind the scenes and doing so much work, you know, to put this all together. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. And PyLady Slack, right? So reach out also, I mean, if you want to have chats about leadership or, you know, whatnot, mentorship. And uh, I think there was uh, some ideas about mentorship today maybe we pick up on that and i think yeah <sighs> if we make it one more hour we are longer than bangkok but <laughs> i guess <laughs> no i'm kidding okay so if you do not go to bed yet in three hours the chicago stream is starting <laughs> so get some coffee you know <laughs> and uh thank you all